programmers, this is my second video on binary search trees. I'm going to pick up where I left off. If you did not watch the first video, click on it and watch it first. It'll give you the code we're going to start with to add things to your binary search trees and print the binary search trees. And today we're going to go ahead and search through the binary search trees, update values, and then delete items. So when you're searching your binary search tree, we had high scores and username associated with every node in our binary search tree. So let's say I'm looking for the name Bob. Well, I'm going to compare it with the root node in my binary search tree, and Bob would be le less than top player 139. So I'm going to look on the left side of the binary search tree. And I'll compare Bob with that node. You'll move either to the right or the left subtree. If you have found it, then you can go ahead and make updates to the high score. If you make it all the way to the bottom, bottom of the binary search tree, like in this case, actually Bob is not in my tree. And if I get down and looking at the left sub tree or the right sub tree and I'm hitting a null without finding my value, that means that Bob was not in my binary search tree. What about deleting from a binary search tree? Well, if the node you want to delete is one of the leaf nodes, like the 1, 9, 15, 27, then you can just remove it and everything's fine. But it could get a little bit more complicated if the value you want to remove is not a leaf node. So let's say you want to delete the root of the whole binary search tree. Well, let's think about which nodes in our tree could do the best job of taking the place of that root. Well, you're either going to want to move as far as you can on the left subtree and pick the rightmost node in the left subtree. You can see that 9 would fit nicely here. Or you're going to go on your right subtree and pick the leftmost node, or 15. So either the 9 or the 15 would do a good job taking the place of our 10 that we're deleting. So you pick either one. And that becomes your new root. So we could do it either way, depends on your implementation. Let's jump back to the code. We're going to create a new function to update our tree. We'll need to keep track of the user's name that the user wants to update. We'll ask them with a printf and a scanf to enter in the user's name. And then we'll first check, is the root username exactly what they were looking for. If it is, our string compare is going to give us a zero and we hit the jackpot. So let's say the user wants to update the node Anne. Well, we'll compare it with our tree root has Dave. Those aren't the same. So our string compare would not return a zero. So in that case, we're going to see, well, does string compare return something that's greater than zero? That means that we need to look on the left side of our subtree because the username of the root is bigger than the username that was just entered in. If not, we need to look on the right side of the subtree. So based on whether we go to the left or the right, we're going to update the pointer r to either look at the right child or the left child, and then we'll go back through our while loop again. The fourth option is that the username doesn't exist. So if we make it all the way through the while and we end up looking at a null pointer, that means that we're at the very bottom of our binary search tree and we have not yet found the name the user was looking for. So they entered something that wasn't in the binary search tree. We talked about two ways to figure out what will replace whatever you're deleting from the binary search tree. We talked about you could either pick the rightmost node from your left subtree or the leftmost node from your right subtree uh, when you're talking about deleting something. I'm going to call a function called find min, and even though the argument to this function is called root, it's going to be really like the root of one of the subtrees. And I'm going to pick the root of the right subtree, whatever is to the right of the node I want to delete. I'm going to figure out, follow the left child from that right subtree and figure out the smallest of the left children. And that'll become the minimum item that I can use. That'll be my new root. Let's also make a new function called delete, and this one will pass in a root to either the whole binary search tree or a subtree, and then the username that we're looking to delete. If the root is null, that means that the user is not found in that subtree or the entire tree that we're looking at right now. Either it's a whole empty binary search tree or we're looking at a subtree that's empty. Next, we've got a string compare where we'll compare the username that they're looking for with the root of our current subtree. 
If it's less than zero that we're getting back, that means we need to try on the left subtree. So we'll recursively call delete using the left child and the username that we're trying to delete. Otherwise, if string compare returns something greater than zero, it means that we need to look on the right subtree. So we'll recursively call with the right child. The final option is if it's not on the left, it's not on the right, then we might have actually found a match. If we found what we're looking to delete and there is no left child, like in this example with Ed, there's a right child but no left child. So if there's no left child, the only thing we'd need to keep track of at all would be a pointer to the right child. And that may not even exist. We may be a leaf node like Anne or Chris or Zane. But let's look at the Ed um, scenario. So if we delete Ed, we want to be able to free up the memory. But before we free up the memory, we need to keep a pointer to Ed's right child, Zane. And that's that's going to be Zane's going to be returned with our recursive function that we'd called and that return value will be used as the right child of Dave so it ends up fixing our tree here's the else if that's after we found the node let's say we want to delete cat and there's a left child that's not null it's Anne, and there is a right child that's null so in this case, we before we delete cat and free that memory, we need to save a pointer to the left child. We need a pointer to Anne so that can be returned. And originally when we had called that delete function recursively, we wanted to save the new left child for Dave as the result of our new call to the delete function. So this will end up updating Dave's left child so it will be pointing to Anne and we haven't lost that child. There's one more case to consider. Let's say we want to delete something that has both a right and a left child, like Dave. So in this final else, where the node has two children, we want to use that function find men, which we decided would just use the right subtree and figure out the leftmost node. So the minimum node on the right subtree. In my case, um, the minimum node on the right subtree is Ed. I'm going to clone Ed, so I'm copying over top of Dave's high score and Dave's username, Ed's information, so I have a new root, but now I'm going to recursively call delete, so the original Ed is deleted, and the pointers are updated so that Zane becomes the new right child. It's a lot, I know. We also, anytime you use malloc to dynamically allocate memory, it's a good practice to free up that memory. So I'm gonna make a free tree function that goes through and frees everything on the left and the right side of each of those nodes. And I'm gonna use recursion again to delete the whole entire tree. In main, we have to add some options to go ahead and update our user or delete our user. And finally, at the end of main, I want to free all that memory with the free tree function. All right, let's test everything out. First, we need to add some data to our binary search tree. I'm going to add uh, dad in there. And then I'm going to add mom. And then I'll add brother. And then I'll add sister. And then let's take a look at our binary search tree. Everything looks good. Let's try some of those new functions. We could try to delete a user that doesn't actually exist. Yep, user not found. We haven't changed anything in our binary search tree. We'll go ahead and delete something that does exist. I'm gonna go ahead and delete dad. So we would have a new root for our binary search tree. And then I'll try to update mom, and mom gets a score of 100. And it looks like all our functions are working.